Okay, we're gonna be mixing a 2K filler primer uh, to put on our body filler and some of the metal pieces uh, that are showing. This is a DTM primer, which is a direct to metal, okay? And uh, we're just gonna mix it up because we haven't used it in a few weeks. So you're just gonna make sure you have a good consistency here before you add your activator in it. Okay, I'm gonna be shooting it out of the Atom X27 spray gun, low volume, low pressure, uh, with a 1.4 tip. And when spraying out of a 1.3 or 1.4 tip, you wanna make sure to reduce it about 10%, um, so this way it can flow out easier. So thanks for watching this video. Before we continue, don't forget to head out to learnautobodyandpaint.com uh, by clicking the card at the top right of the video or down below in the description to get some free auto body and paint training. This is a four to one mixture, so we're gonna look at four to one here. Uh, plus 10% or 20%, it's up to you. So uh, we're gonna do the four to one. Probably not gonna use all of it, but we'll make a little extra. So we're gonna go up to the number four. Reducer. Yup, so be sure to wear gloves and when you're mixing it, you're gonna notice the top is very thin and then the bottom's gonna be very thick. So just keep mixing until you get an even consistency. It's gonna be a few minutes of mixing usually. And then you can let your primer sit for about 10 minutes or so before you start painting. Uh, because you, there is a, a, a waiting, a set time after mixing. We're also going to pull out the filter because normally you don't need filters when spraying a 2K filler primer. Uh, it, sometimes it just slows up the flow. All right, so I'm just gonna jump in here and uh, just tell you a, a few common problems. So sometimes people, they're gonna say, you know, my primer is spraying on really dry and it looks sandy. Okay, so if your primer is spraying on really dry looking, uh, I'm intentionally putting it on a little light here because I just wanna make sure I just cover uh, one time. You know what I mean? I'm gonna go over it a few times here and then just cover the metal. But when it's coming out sandy and dry, it means you're spraying at too much of a lower air pressure um, or your material is way too thick. And it could also be a combination of both, thick material and low, low pressure. So uh, if you're having that issue, reduce your primer down a little bit and make sure you're spraying in the range of, you know, 18 to 22, you know, 23 PSI max, but normally with primer, you're looking for coverage and fill, not the most super fine atomization. So you're normally spraying uh, at about, you know, 18 to 22 pounds. Okay, full fluid flow. You can see it's actually, it's going on pretty wet here. You can see the gloss, right? And um, we're just gonna cover it. The, the, the goal here is to fill all of our sand scratches. Okay, fill the pinholes. Sometimes you're gonna miss filling the pinholes, like it's just not enough primer to fill it. Um, so that's when you put your glaze putty. And we're gonna be doing that also um, after this primer step. Um, and you can see that I primed that rock chip right there, right? Um, I knew that I wasn't gonna cover, but I primed it anyway. So it gives me a foundation to put my glaze putty in. You know what I mean? Um, or priming all the plastic here the raw plastic because we're going to be painting all the plastic on the van uh, the same color as the van. So these handles are going to be white. Uh, the bumper covers are going to be black. The bumpers are going to be black. Um, what else did we, the mirrors are going to be black. Those are, those are plastic mirrors that we had. Those are just going to be black. So the paint job is going to come on really cool. Um, everything laid on really nice. We're just priming up some of the plastic. Now some people ask, hey Tony, do I need to prime? The plastic or can I just put adhesion promoter? You could do either or, or you could do both, okay? It depends on how you want the finish to come up. If you're looking for a quick paint job and you don't care about the paint texture, right? Like if we look at this back bumper plastic, it has a paint, It's a, there's a plastic texture to it, right? 
So if you wanna fill it and get it look, looking like glass like the rest of the body, then you can fill it with a 2K filler primer, okay? Scuff it, sand it with like, uh, you know, a, a, a 320 grit, give or take. You just wanna scuff it up, okay? You don't wanna go too rough with 80 grit because you're gonna be, it's just gonna be too much, okay? You're gonna be cutting the plastic up, it's gonna get all rough looking, okay? And then the goal is to fill up the, the plastic texture with your 2K filler primer, and then when you sand it and cut it down, you basically remove it. And we talk about that more in this video. We actually show you um, all the steps. Um, but here I'm just priming the bumper just because we had, and because I, I wanted, the bumper is gonna be black, gloss black single stage, and I wanted it to come out really nice. So that's why we sprayed the bumpers. And um, when I'm saying day three, it's pretty much, you know, two to four hours a day. Today I put a good four hours in. Um, we got everything primed up, uh, whole van is sanded, including the roof, um, the patch on the top is sanded, everything, not sanded, primed, primed plastic here, um, holes are filled, okay, we got a little bit of pinholing here, not too bad, um, we're just going to fill that with a little glaze putty, hit it flat with uh, probably um, a 400 grit, okay, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, again, this is a quickie paint job, nothing crazy. Uh, we touched up our metal that was showing in here, okay? Um, I used low pressure, as you saw, I was spraying this. We got a little bit of overspray in a glass, not, not a big deal because we're gonna be, uh, we could razor blade the glass when it's done. Okay, so this stuff like this comes out super easy. It's not a huge deal. Um, I just didn't have the patience to go taping everything up. So, you you know, it is what it is. Uh, we primed up our plastic. Okay. Just quickly. Our body work, some of the metal that was showing, we just quickly primed up. Okay, so we're just going to get our DA quick and just hit it, scuff it with 400 grit. Scuff all this with 400 grit. If there's any little imperfections, <clears throat> we're just going to fill it with uh, glaze putty. Like if we come over here. Little of the fiber, little bit of the fiber strands are coming out, so we're just gonna flat block it with 400. Okay, we'll probably just use a DA actually. Here we'll fill up with a little glaze putty. Here, because it's the hood, you know you want the hood to come out nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these little things up with glaze putty. Little pin holding, little pit there. Okay, uh, make it look really good. Even the bumper cover, we have a little stress crack in the metal. <clears throat> we're gonna fill that up with putty, with glaze putty. Um, just, you know, make the front look really nice, right? Sides don't have many uh, little chips or anything because obviously mostly the front uh, gets chips on vehicles. The back, not bad at all. Maybe another 10 hours of work, we should be done. Okay, uh, prepping, cleaning, and painting. Painting's probably about total of one and a half, two and a half hours of total painting. Uh, that's without masking and, and stuff like that. And This is what it looks like when you prime plastic. You can see that if you cut down like this, you're gonna your your final paint job is gonna look like glass. If you look down here, you can still see texture, orange peel in the primer here. So all we have to do is just sand a little bit more and it gets flat like this. And that's how you get rid of plastic paint texture if you want to, you don't have to. Okay, you could just prime it, lightly sand it and then paint it and you'll have a texture. Like here, we don't care. I'm, I'm actually gonna be doing a Raptor liner on here, I believe, at a later point, but I did just prime everything. 
so that's that's pretty much how you want to do it so we're sanding everything down with like a 360 i got some 400 grit also uh and we're just kind of like re-going over all the panels you know all the body work is done we're just cutting the 2k filler primer and if we have any areas where we have to do some glaze putty we will do it right here looks like we can use a little glaze putty right there other than that everything looks good Yep, so the next video that's going to be released on YouTube is going to be the masking and painting. Um, of course, edited, chunked down into bite-sized pieces here. Uh, we're going to do a two-tone black single stage and a white single stage. Comment down below. Let me know. I hope you're enjoying. All right, so we're going to put some 1K glaze putty. This is good stuff. You, Paul, Dolphin, 1K uh, combination putty. It's good for little nicks and chips. Okay, final stage of the bodywork process. We can see here we have a little bit of pinholes here. Very little. Uh, some rock chips that we missed on the bumpers, things like this. Um, again, this is a work van. We don't have to do it, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Uh, so we're going to go around, uh, mostly hit our bodywork areas where we have a little bit of pinholes and whatnot and uh, get that done. Because these are so tiny and we have very little spots and we're putting a, a, um, a single stage thick enamel on it, I'm not even going to worry about it. We're just going to spray enamel right over it. It will cover and it won't be a problem. But just remember... You could do it the way I'm going to do it, just spray right over it. Um, but the technical correct way is to hit it with a sealer, a 1K sealer, or um, a little bit of primer after, because you're really not supposed to paint over glaze putty. Uh, but this is a gray color, and the paint's going to be white. It's not going to show. Um, in the old school times, you know, you would have a, a red putty, and then it would sometimes bleed through to the, uh, to the white if you're painting white and stuff like that. But this is so minor. Um, that it won't be a problem. So I don't have a good spreader with me. So I'm just going to use a card here. I just bent up and we're going to use a card. You could even use, you know, just get creative, but this is fine. We'll just hit this because this is going to be a black bumper. So try to uh, make it so the chips don't stand out that much. And again, the more you do this, the more work it's going to be for you. And I'm trying to eliminate work right now because this is, again, a work van. But you get the idea. And when you're putting it on, you put it on one way and then you want to kind of push it in the other way. You know what I mean? So we got some right here. couple pinholes here pretty much filled all the nicks and chips and this is the stage where you're allowed to go crazy you know if you want to fill and get every little minor nick and chip that didn't come out you know during the the major body work process this is when you would do it if you notice a lot of pinholes in your bondo your body filler the ideal thing to do is just mix another skin okay a little bit of putty body filler and just fill it and then sand it uh with like a 240 grit but you could also do it this way okay you could also just get it primed see what the primer fills if there's any more left over you fill it like we did here pretty much it you know we're gonna let that cure and then um we'll be ready for paint very very soon mm -hmm. 